I'd like to speak about my senior brother and uncle, Kwabine Ijeye Japon. I think there's something that has to be said for this man. Uh, in the recent history, from the time he became general secretary of the MPP up until today, there is something to be said about Kwabine Japon. When you look at Kwabine Japon and you look at him now, what do you see? You see practicality, determination, tenacity, and absolute total loyalty to the new patriotic party. I salute you. Uh, Mr. Kwabine Japon, he has demonstrated total loyalty to the new patriotic party. This is a man who was kicked out as general secretary together with the chairman. The chairman was so angry, he filed a writ in court. Kwabine decided that he would not go to court. He went to his house to go and stay quietly. He continued to be there and to connect with MPP parliamentarians. I'm telling you, most of the MPP MPs are always found in his house. They are talking every day. In 2020, he got a call from the presidential candidate, Adodankwa Kufado, who has been his long-time, very, very good friend. He managed his campaign way back in 1998. They'd been very, very tight. When Kwabana was running for general secretary, he was endorsed by Akufado. Akufado called him and said, my good friend, I know that you're not in government. Running a second-term campaign. I remember what you and I have done on campaigns. Come and join us. Against all odds, against many party people, seniors didn't like it. Kwabana was put on the Kufado's campaign. Come 2021, some people lobbied for Kwabna to get a position in the government. Other people said no, it was back and forth. Kwabna just stayed back, no problem, quiet. Found his nomination to contest for president. He didn't win in the first round. He left. He said the party has made a choice. They want Dr. Baumia. I will go by it. There's not many people who are loyal to a fault, to a political party, to a cause, to a vision like Kwabna and Japan. And that is, what, that is what people must emulate. That is what people, recently I went to visit him in his house. It was very late in the night him. And those days when you were going to Kwabine Japan's house, all you needed to do was to get to East Legon's uh, American house and tell them I'm going to Kwabine Japan's house. Because from the American house to his house, it's about a 20 minutes drive. But he was the only person staying there. This is 2001. He was the only one staying in that bush, that place. He's still living there today. Today when you are going there, it's not a bush anymore. I was telling him. And so we, when he saw me off, he walked me out and he, he was pointing to me which house used to be here. And he said it was only that. That weapon is here. And we laughed about it. Great guy. We have much, much younger colleagues, myself from Brazil and others, who go to his Adabraka office. He will buy for us a Chinese from walk-in restaurant back in the day, way back when he was on television running commentary and doing small, small MPP politics, 1997. He will buy walk-in and then we'll sit down and eat. I was in Legon. We'll come from Legon and I tell my roommate that, I'm going to visit Kwabine Japan. They say they want to come along. And then we all go and sit down and chat. And that's how we've known him that, that long. Look at his loyalty to the MPP. Today, he's been named in Dr. Balmier's campaign. Look at his loyalty to the party. And, it, it is, and you will not hear Kwabine Japan say anything foul about any politician. You will never hear the things that Fifi Kwete does. You will never hear Kwabine Japan say that. You can look at all his tapes from the time he was president of four spokesperson till today. He has demonstrated that he practices politics of issues. And even when he has to come after people, he doesn't. He will use very decent words. You can tell that he's a very well brought up in Fansman Chap. Very, very well brought up. These are the examples that we need for our politics, not the kinds of things Fifi Kwete is doing. Kwabne Chapo was presidential spokesperson, sterling qualities. One of the best that we had had. He opened up the castle to journalists. Castle briefing, he started it. We still do it today. So when you're looking for people of gravitas to run our politics, whether it's NDC or MPP, you can find them. Let's hope that the MPP and NDC put up those people in front. People and persons of gravitas. Not the things Fifi Kwiti is saying. This is Kwabne Japan. Good evening, sir. And I don't even know how to describe it. This is a man who has showed... Yes, loyalty to his party. 
and he has shown decorum when he's talking about things. Recently, we showed his, his video on football, the Ghana Football Association stuff. And he had granted me an interview in preparation for uh, the World Cup that occurred in Russia. I believe that was 2018. And, and look at what he said. He said he told the NDC people. And the NDC people are his friends. He doesn't consider them enemies. He speaks with decorum like that. In 2008, we interviewed him about a subject. And um, Pabna was tempted to use very harsh words on the NDC. Uh, no, in 2016, we interviewed him about subjects of 2008 election. And the question that I put to him during the documentary interview, it was such a question that he thought about it and he was very unhappy with that uh, narrative, the prospect. I'm going to show you the video soon. Hold on, it's coming. And so uh, he talked about it, but look at the words that he chose to use, something that was very upsetting to him about how political opponents have said, look at the choice of words he used. That is decorum. That is leadership. Have a look. The MPP on paper has the best political structure in this country, if not the whole of Africa. You know, because we are represented right to the minutest detail in every community. The NDC went about massive propaganda. I mean, I was listed as the third richest. Uh, you know, there was a list of people who had um, accounts in so called Prudential Bank, and if you put together the cumulative. That's the story about he being listed as the third richest. He was very, very upset with this. When we were discussing this, he didn't want to talk about it. I said, let me put on the camera. And he said, okay, you put on your camera. And look at how he addressed it before the camera. But he was very unhappy about it. But as soon as the camera is on and you're a political leader and you're having a discourse that is going public, you have to even compose yourself, your body language, the way you communicate. That's the videos I'm going to show you in a while about 69th election, 79th election, up to 2000th election. And then Dodu will come in and we talk. And uh, Dr. Sikanko will come in and we talk about America. He's on his way out to uh, cover for us the Super Tuesday that's happening in a few days' time in the United States. H.S. Sikanko is here to, he's here to bid us farewell. He's traveling abroad tomorrow. And uh, he'll be covering the event for us live. But that's, that's Kobini Japan. That's the spirit. That's what we need. Viewers, young people in Ghana, these are the politicians you need. We need them, 1,000 of them in MPP, 1,000 of them in NDC. That's the way our country will go forward, not Fifi Kwete. No, 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 no. It can be Fifi Kwete if he changes his narrative, but not the narrative that Fifi Kwete is carrying right now. It's a no, 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 no. The what Kwabini Japan carries is better, is greater. And there are people in the NDC who carry that narrative. That's why I mentioned their names. Alaji Baba Kamara, Christina Makunama, Emma Mitchell. These are all NDC people, particularly decent politicians. Spio Gabra, they are NDC people. Peter Pondugbe, he's an NDC man. Decent guy. They speak well. They are intelligent. They have policy initiatives. Not Fifi Kwete. What is he talking about? The general secretary of the NDC? This is the general secretary of the NDC. We know of Alaji Hudu Yaya. We remember him. I went to the NDC head office several times to interview Alaji Hudu Yaya. I'm not talking about the current head office. I'm talking about the old one at Paloma. That's where we used to pack our journalists. Go to Paloma, climb upstairs, go and see GS. He's there. You ask him questions. Decent guy, Alaji Hudu Yaya. Decent guy. Of course, I knew him from law school when we were in Makola. He sat behind me in class. And I always go, and Alaji comes, we all stand up. Whether you're MPP or NDC, Alaji enters the class. He says, oh, it's okay. You can sit down. We all stand up, oh, Alaji, Alaji, oh, Alaji. Because he's such a decent guy. Not Fifi Kwiti. What are people saying on the text? As he, he wanted the president from 2008, right? But he's come up more recently because the people are saying that the way the Napo Educhum thing is going, in fact, the people consider even the challenges that Won Tumi is facing to be part of the Napo Educhum issue. Because don't forget that Won Tumi started as the Bosom Tree chair of MPP. So he's, he, he and Edutum are pretty close. And some people see all the issues around Mencia inviting him and all those things to be a play out of the Edutum napo issue. Right? So they are saying, if you choose Napo, you have a problem. If you choose Edutum, you have a problem. Choose somebody else who is very competent. Now, Kamele Japan, no doubt. Now, what is Kamele Japan strong? Look, if you know anything about politics in Ghana, Kamele Japan has a, a solid personal story. His father was killed when he was like 19. Right? This is under the PNDC early 80s. 
And he's sort of come out to say, I've forgiven everybody who did this to me. So he has a strong personal story. He's an MPP guy through and through, right? He worked in the road ministry, did commentary on television. So journalist, engineer, all right, TV presenter, and then spokesperson for President Kufo in his eight years. That's, that's, that's strong, right? So he's quite good with the media. And he's an engineer. People say, look, China has a lot of engineers. We've got engineers in the vice presidency. Engineers are very structured in the way they think. Kwame Japan has worked in the Ghana Institution of Engineering. So he's actually an engineer. All right? Strong personal brand, track record in party. Even though he lost presidential, he campaigns for whoever wins. 2012, he became general secretary. All the problems he faced came back to campaign. Even 2020 campaigned again. So his party credentials are there. He speaks very well. He's also an Ashanti. Right? So he answers the Ashanti question. But he doesn't bring... The only problem, though, is that, you know, some of the things he said about Baumia when he was running for this latest race, like, you can come back to haunt him, all right? So how are you going to run him with somebody you thought could not lead? Or you thought you were better than whatever? And then troubled past, he and Afoko were removed. He's, he, he's made the case that that was completely offside. So he's come out more forcefully to speak about that. So some could say bringing him in could be sort of trying to bring a united front. But some can use that against him. All right. But it's an interesting and exciting prospect, prospect for, for, um, for somebody whose name just came up recently. He's exciting a lot of people. And one of the things I always say is that if you put these candidates together in a debate, I think he would, he would win because of the way he, 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 will, he, will, he will win most debates. Not because he shouts, but he, he's solid in the way he speaks. So we don't know what Baumia will do with him. It could be an interesting uh, decision. All right, because of all the things he's done, media, engineering, and um, party administration, and all of that. So, Kwabena J. Japong is a pretty interesting choice. A pretty interesting choice. This is, the, elevating those. This is the thing about Kwabena Japong. In talking about Ghana first, he admits the NPP has challenges. Yeah. And, and that's when daring him to. Uh, yes. Yeah. And that's something that. If you are Baumia and you want to be president, you must admit. Mm -hmm. He started by admitting it. But you need somebody who would not shy away from it. Mm -hmm. And that is why for the NPP, just like Baumia did for Akufado, you need somebody who is not in mainstream government to, to take the shield. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to become your shield. Yeah. And that's where Kwame Japan stands tall. Because if you're going to go ahead and keep doing, oh, they throw the mad, it sticks. Bah, they throw, mm -hmm. sticks. Because if they, I mean, you've seen the receipt guy on Twitter. <laughs> you see what the receipt guy is doing. Which... Well, I mean, so when it comes I'm to... I'm told you also be putting on billboards for that. Ah, <laughs> no, so you see, that's what Kwame Japan brings to the table. Mm. He's somebody who is, I mean, isn't scared to criticize the NPP and admit. And I've said before, I agree mm. with those who have said that. A lot of the thing would depend, yes, if you're in government, your records will show. But this is the other point. Because today you have a vice president uh, who is leading the NPP and not the certain president coming back. And the vice president, whose campaign team has been able to nicely say, hmm, it is a it is a you need somebody. So that if Bamiya cannot say these things as, oh, uh, the economy is bad, I, I can understand, but we'll do this, Kwame Japan will say it and take them, I mean, and be able to defend Bamiya on that score. Then when you get to, uh, I've mentioned, when Kwame Japan came in and of, of the other grouping, right? Kamala Japan is very eloquent. You can't dismiss that. He took on in his campaign for presidency a certain approach, which Bamiya later on, even in his speech, appeared to have been leaning towards. Let's put Ghana first. Let's revitalize the people to make sure that the nation first and all of that. He appears to be getting, gaining ground with that message, which will give hope to people because hmm. from where we are today, the FPP has a lot to do to give people the hope they had in 2016. To actually gain the support that's required. So that's what turns the scale slightly in favor of Kabne Japan. And how is he doing so? His media interviews, he's done one with me, he's done one across the front. You can see a lot of people mm. have actually had mm. recent interviews with him. Why would you think he will do that? So who is most likely on the, in your top five? Most likely. I'm not saying he will get. I, I, I don't want to put him in trouble. Who is most likely? <laughs> Where's the receipt? Yay. Most likely. <laughs> I want the best president. The general.